Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape Oil Painting Demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and the painting I'm bringing you today, I'm calling it Northland Beach, 8x16. Painted this, uh, this last week. Um, the reference came from a photo I took of one of our beaches up here in Northland, and uh, we have these things here called the heads, which are like these like little peninsulas that kind of stick out and so um i've had the reference prepped for quite a while i did quite a quite a few colory things to it of course uh slammed in a different sky and things and if you're interested in my uh, the process i used to to prep the reference you might want to check out the reference uh, uh some of the reference uh, prep videos in the members area where i show you kind of take you through how I take kind of a dull, boring photograph and, uh, you know, sort of get it on its way to becoming a painting. And it's just taking full advantage of some of the technology we have today. And uh, I don't know, some of you may know, many of you may not, that I was a professional illustrator for many years. So I worked, what, 13 years actually. Um, I worked in the computer, uh, not exclusively, actually, I would do a lot of work like with pen and ink or brush and ink outside the computer, scan it in and do all my coloring and painting in the computer though. So I'm very aware of the sorts of cool things you can do with computers as far as even turning uh, photos into some sort of artwork and things like that. Ultimately though, I think doing real artwork in the real world is where it's at um, and using the computer for what it's good at, which is compositing things. Uh, which is what the, my reference image would have been is a composite of another sky um, from somewhere else and then the photo that I took um, and I really recommend by the way just as so another, yet another sidebar uh, you should really like try to take your own basic reference photos and then work with those and uh, manipulate them into something that's inspiring to paint from yeah Anyway, uh, yeah, more about the members area. The great thing about the members area is like you could see this video uh, in its live state, which would be, it's over three hours. Um, and the reason it's a bit more, uh, well, this is the video you're seeing now is quite a bit sped up, uh, maybe 14, 15 times. Uh, math, obviously not my strong suit. Uh, but you in the watching the live process, you know, you can go, well, gee, I ain't got no three hours. But what I recommend do is spacing it out. And uh, um, you're there in the throes of battle with me. Also, that's at 4K, so you can see um, everything in very good, clear detail. Although, you know, release these 15 minute uh, versions of the painting sessions at, at a very high res as well. But it ain't, it ain't 4K, I'll tell you that. Um, anyway, it's a great place if you like the kinds of things I do um, to uh, to investigate, and uh, it goes. Uh, I think it's six. I think it's six bucks a month American, and uh, access to hundreds of videos there. Some of them are, like I said, just the reference videos and things like that. Anyway, enough about that. Enough about trying to get you to the members area, because I appreciate you here too. Just hanging out on regular old YouTubes, being a regular, you know, type subscriber. Um, what am I doing now? Well, we're painting the sky, and um, I am on a big, big, big NS binge right now. I am going to be taking on the, the most epic NS project uh, that I think any, I know it has to be, there has to be no artist that's gone after what I'm going to go after. That's all I'm going to say for now, so you can start getting excited about that if you like my NS work. I don't even know all the ways it's going to manifest. I just know it's going to be huge, absolutely huge. Yeah. Anyway, as how, how does that pertain to this painting? Well, I've been working on getting uh, you know images together for that project, and so I've got NS on the brain, and um, I don't I didn't paint this guy in a Nessie way. I, I, I having been going gone through so many NS images lately I'm, I'm very familiar with the way he might approach a sky and it's quite different than I do but um, one of the things I look out for with this sort of sky is you have all these like sort of strips right 
and um, and I'm always pointing this out in the the live videos you want to be careful like I don't like like say you got this dark strip of cloud and it's going right into your tree mass most people would just paint that the way it is but in my experience you're better off tapering it out fading it out and not having a direct bar of cloud go right into your trees because when you zoom out what you'll see is like tree mass dark tree mass dark bar bar coming out from it it just doesn't look good or right um, and this is something I think a lot of landscape painters just intuitively avoid in my case it's um, it's intuitive but it's also just something I consciously know that I'm going to avoid um, the other thing I look for is like I have two two aspects to the sky I have the darker aspects and the lighter aspects so you can see me starting in on the lighter aspects now and there I always try and have a progression to really the brightest stuff usually not always but usually closest to the horizon you know or in this case we have some little um, mountain type shapes in the distance and by the way here's a tip for you too because you did such a great job of you know listening to me talk about the members area whether or not of course you'll ever go there is beside the point um, but you're patient and I really appreciate that um, so these are like uh, more heads or something they're in the distance right in the photo reference there are maybe one quarter the size uh, that I painted them I really blew them up and that's a big 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 tip for you especially if you are taking your own reference images you you got mountains in the distance you got uh, big sh uh, you got shapes in the distance you want to make them much bigger much bigger because our human perception will generally perceive them as bigger um, now this photo reference was taken with a wide-angle lens which really exacerbates that in fact even photography that's not a wide-angle lens will exacerbate it it'll push things in the distance and make them look super tiny and also tends to make them look much darker than we would perceive them with our human vision cameras don't see the way that we see so if you're working with photo reference and uh, you know there's a lot of traps in here and I've spent a lot of time in the channel over the um, the years talking about those traps but I, I know we're always getting new people so I don't mind repeating myself what are some of the traps well I just pointed out too uh, one is like mountains hill shapes get real tiny in the back um, shapes like say that uh, we have that little bit of peninsula coming out behind our main shape that was a lot darker in the reference I will tend to lighten those kinds of things because um, we would perceive a bit of haze um, and sometimes cameras with their cameras have a lit most cameras and I used a very good camera to take this it was a Canon 5D Mark II something like that or Mark, Mark V I don't know Mark, uh, it's a 5D Mark II or Mark III Mark IV you can tell you really keep good a very nice camera with a very good lens um, it you know does a very good job and uh, it takes in a lot of information but you know it's going to do it doesn't see things the way people do we see things differently and we actually almagate pictures from um, scanning a scene and we create the pictures in our mind uh, that's a fact that many people are not aware of cameras will capture are way more uh, stationary and the images they produce uh, in comparison are quite stagnant uh, compared to our human vision which is a living vision it's alive and as a painter uh, this is one of the reasons why so many painters will really diss on using photographic reference and rightly so because what a lot of amateurs will do is just copy the reference in paint and um, some of them will even have some success okay so but just because you're having some success doesn't mean it's the right thing to do um, especially when these problems have been solved um, by better painters okay so um, in my view is that you can use photographic reference um, but you need to be aware of those traps so I just gave you two another one is like we don't have a road or anything on this one but um, if you have a road generally it would shoot the bottom of the road it'll be like the super wide area that tapers really quick and artificially to 
a smaller amount and you'll never you'll always see me put in a curved road you'll never see me do like this straight road because that would just read as a triangle in your painting you know and you won't realize it um, until you get a bit of experience on your belt or you say you have a teacher like myself that's pointing that out to you um, but uh, if you have a road or something and using in, in your photographic reference always bring in that bottom of it so that it's more of a human proportion um, and I, I've noticed that I have a really really nice zoom lens um, that I've had for years and um, but I notice I tend to shoot everything really wide because I'm trying to get everything um, I know how to compensate and I do yeah uh, and there's another thing okay uh, well it's not so much a problem with the photos as your approach to photos um, there's going to be way more detail in that photograph than you would ever 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 want to put in your painting we don't need to see all this detail okay we want you to synthesize that detail and give us your your human your human perception your emotional feel and contact with that image I'm sorry I had to pause that I thought maybe the lady that's watching my dog was out there, but it's just some kids. She'll just call out as she's walking up the driveway. Yeah. Um. Anyway, there's a couple, you know, just the things with photos. Um. Let's talk about these rocks I did. Now, rocks I've, I've had many people on the channel over uh, the years talk about the difficulty of painting rocks, and I can relate. I really had a lot of struggles early on too. Um, you get hung up in things and they start feeling too like if you don't put the angles right they just feel lumpen that's one one big challenge just right off the bat um, you put too many angles then they're too sharp in your painting they, they, they don't feel right they don't have a natural um, you know they're not slotting into the rest of the landscape and they're calling too much attention to, to themselves my advice to you is to don't paint rocks um, I think you should paint your impression of a rock and it's just a matter of practice from there but keep in mind you want to simplify things you always want to simplify things you have definitely have a sense of which direction the light is coming from if the light is very uh, vague in your reference what direction it's coming from like right or left pick a side usually not the center I don't recommend that um, that can happen with say with certain sunset type photos where you've got the the sun setting and the light might be you think it's it's a good idea to kind of project it from the center out that usually doesn't work very well at all that's not a good effect that can be a great effect in photography in painting even if I have a reference like that I will tend to make it a little bit obscure um, as far as a real like defined sun or something in the center of the painting it's not really my style but uh, like I'd have a blurry bright spot in the cloud or something um, but I would still tend to pick one side or the other to render tr things like tree shapes and rocks um, and you don't have to get real intense with it because if you get too intense with that idea um, it might seem arbitrary and weird and wrong which is what you don't want but if you pick a side and you're consistent um, that's a great way to go and you can see some shapes like those mountainous shapes in the back I just made them very flat and I'll tell you that's another we got man we're giving you a lot of tips oh no we only got a minute left sorry I looked at the wrong line on my screen um, when I'll just give you one more tip though that I'm kind of picking up from a nest that I want to really want to try and work into my work more is that as he progressed in his career which is very long like over 50 years long um, he really just started flattening things a lot he would just have a mass of trees he wouldn't just paint them one color there was modulation in them but not not a ton of detail necessarily so that's one of the things i kind of incorporated with those purple mountains there i was like hmm you know and they were actually a real icky greenish color and the reference which i decided would be nicer as a purple this is a kind of painting though where I'm going to pop it in my store and you can buy it and this one is going to cost uh, uh, we're going to say 350 349 so look for that link below the video purchases from me and support me 
it would be awesome uh, be, until the galleries come back online with the uh, you know due to the uh, unknown virus of unknown origins anyway until I come back with another video do me a favor do me a solid take good care of yourself love yourself your family all your loved ones um, stay out of trouble and God bless you and your family